Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Water Bay Reads, where I discuss illustrated classics. My name is Heather. Today, I have a book haul video for you. I want to show you all the books that I got for my birthday in April. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking of other videos to put out instead of putting this book haul video out. Um, they always seem more timely, so this is running a bit behind. My family has been so wonderful and generous and given me books for my birthday. And also, for Mother's Day, I received a gift card to a publishing company that I have just really fallen in love with. I have a rather large family and many of the books on my wish list are secondhand as well as new. So I have quite a few books to show you. And so I thought what I would do is I would split the two book haul videos up and show you my new books in this video and my secondhand books in another video. But before I get started, I have two things I wanted to tell you guys about. First of all, back in the spring when I did my book haul video then, I reached out to Manderley Press to ask them what inspired Emily Maud when she did the decorations for their version of China Court. And they were so kind to offer to gift one of my followers a copy and even more generously, they're offering it internationally so they'll ship it um, anywhere in the world. So if you are interested in winning a copy of China Court, head over to my Instagram account or my Facebook account and you'll see um, the giveaway there. I'll post direct links in the description box to my accounts so that you can get to them easily. So I'm so excited for that giveaway. I just finished reading China Court and it was a really great book. It was written in a style that I have not come across before, as if time doesn't exist. And it's one of those stories where you have to kind of reference the family tree a lot because it is generational and it's about the lives of the people who have lived inside this house. It's a great combination of cozy nature and domestic life combined with the more interesting side of human nature. So it's an interesting mix. It's a very thought-provoking book in my opinion and I really enjoyed it. I'm still kind of processing. Rumor Garden is someone whose children's books I'm familiar with but whose adult books I'm just getting to know. So yeah, I really love this book and I'm so grateful to Manderley Press for offering a gift copy to my followers. So thank you Manderley Press. The other thing that I wanted to tell you guys is back in that spring video, you know how I always begin my videos with something illustrated that I'm just enjoying. And I showed you guys these seed packets from Hudson Valley Seed Company. I wanted to let you know that they're coming up beautifully. I'll, I'll put an insert of the zinnias here for you to see real quick so you can see how beautifully they're growing, but they're doing quite well, so I'm very happy. It turns out zinnias are very easy to grow, actually. So, so let's get into the books. As usual, I'll begin with showing you an item, an illustrated item that I've been enjoying. So let me get a sip of tea. I'm drinking tea this morning. I'm trying to cut down on my coffee. This is one of my mugs that my mom gave me that she had in the, in her stash and it's really pretty it has violets all over it and it says with love so I'll take a sip of tea and we'll get started I always begin these videos with an illustrated item that I've been enjoying and I am so proud to show you these journals which are designed by my little sister Lauren you can get them on Amazon and they have that um, sort of soft rubbery feel. I think it's called soft touch velvet matte, something like that. I'll put it up, but it's got that really nice feel to them and they're just normal, uh, typical notebook lined paper. And I think they're so pretty and I love them all together. And she has them at an excellent price point too, but she has the citrus one that just says journals and I just love this design. And then she has this cute one which is sweet as a peach. And then this bee mandala one, which is the one I've had for a while and have been using. 
um, I'm just so proud of her for what she does and I love her products. I'll leave the link in the description box below if you're interested in picking up um, a journal or two but I just wanted to show you these because I'm so proud of them by my little sister Lauren and if you're on Etsy her shop's name is Peachy Mint Prince and so um, you can check out some of her other items for sale there too. I just think they're so pretty and I love them so much. I have a new nonfiction book by Bushel and Peck, Exoplanets, A Guide to the Worlds Outside Our Solar System. And it's written by Wendy, and I'm sorry I'm going to say this incorrectly, but it's Bjazovich. And the art is by David Miles. I was so excited when I saw this because it is the first picture book that I've come across that talks about the exoplanets, um, planets outside of our solar system. And it's really well done. It breaks it down into all the whys and hows, and it has different sections. So for example, there's a section that says, how do we find new planets? And then it goes into the ways in which you find new planets. So radial velocity, transit, direct imaging, gravitational microlensing, and astrometry. And then it breaks it down and talks about each method for how how they find and new planets outside of our solar system. And then they also break down the types of planets that you could possibly find. Like these would all be the gas giants. And it says, meet the gas giants. And then it has the gas giants listed. These would be the ne Neptunian exoplanets and some of the super Earths. Yeah, and it's just such a great book. Like we've really been enjoying it and it's so beautiful. It's very well designed and there's a little bit of foiling on, I don't know if you can see it, on the title here. Our exoplanets from Bushel and Peck. And by the way, I, another reason I love this company, and I've told you guys this before, but for every book that you purchase, they donate a book to um, charity. And also, if you purchase directly from their website, they will alleviate the delivery um, carbon emissions by donating towards companies that work to remove carbon from the air. So I really love that as well. But that's only if you order from their website. Speaking of publishing companies that I love, I am so happy to tell you about a publishing company that I have recently discovered. If you watched my video that I put out at the top of the year, um, it was a, a video about out of print vintage children's books that I feel are still worth reading. And on that video, I talked about an author whose books I've really been enjoying, Margot Benary Ispert. And I had been talking about her book, The Blue Mystery, as well as The Shooting Star, both of which I just absolutely adored. And so I started searching for more of her books and to see if any of her books were in publication. And I ended up coming up with two of her books that are in publication, um, The Ark, as well as Rowan Farm. And both of these books are published by a company called Purple House Press. And I fell in love with this publishing company. I spent so much time on their website. I think I discovered them in March. And my husband and son took notice, and so for Mother's Day, they gave me a very generous gift card to Purple House Press, and so I purchased quite a few books. I separated out some other titles to show you in a later video because they had that sort of autumnal or winter vibe to them. Purple House Press began about 20 years ago when Jill Morgan, who at the time was living in Texas, realized that some of her favorite books from childhood were actually very expensive to get a hold of and she felt rather dismayed at the fact that these beautiful titles, these beautiful books with excellent messages were just going to be lost to obscurity because of how expensive they are. And so she decided to republish many of these titles. And her favorite book from her childhood that she began her company with was Mr. Pine's Purple House. And I don't know if any of you recognize this book, but I didn't know about it and read it to my son actually last night and he loved it and it's really great for a kid who's going through that phase in life where they're really interested in colors. My son went through that phase 
um, a few years back where he just wanted all the books about colors and I actually read him The Wizard of Oz at that time and it was a real hit by the way. <laughs> but anyway, really enjoyed it. It's about Mr. Pine who can't find his house and he's trying to find a way for his house to stand out and every time he does something to change it, his neighbors copy him so it becomes difficult for him to find his own house. So he decides he's going to paint his house purple <laughs> and it's just a delightful book and it can also be be used as a early reader I feel because the text is just wonderful for reading oh and this is a great example one of the things you learn from reading this book is how to paint because it talks about the steps that he had to take to paint a house it's very 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 cute and yeah so I just wanted to tell you guys about Purple House Press it's woman owned she no longer lives in Texas the company has now moved to Kentucky and let me show you the books that I purchased. I've already showed you um, The Ark and Rowan Farm. Now these are hardback and under the dust jacket is a repeat of the dust jacket on the board. It's so beautiful and it's just really well made. I do want to just point out that The Ark and Rowan Farm are not illustrated but yeah I'm really excited to get to these. I want to get to The Ark pretty soon. In fact I probably will start it as soon as I'm done editing this video and, and uploading this video. One of the things I was so excited about is when I noticed that on their website that they had The Golden Name Day by Jenny Lindquist. I had heard about The Golden Name Day on Celeste from a Reader's Almanac's channel. I'll link her video below in my description box so that you can hear what she had to say about it. These were some of her favorite books from childhood and I had never heard about them. Celeste at a Reader's Almanac has just the most wonderful reading suggestions. She's really well tuned to vintage children's books, especially American children's books and I just love that about her channel and I really enjoyed her most recent video which is books to have in your summer cottage so do check that one out. I've, I've replayed that video about three times now because I just love all the suggestions. I think they're wonderful and so I was so excited to find this so I purchased it and I read it already. I read it in late spring which turned out to be perfect timing for reading it because it begins in the spring and it's a quaint beautiful book full of wonderful relationships between children, friends as well as family. It's very charming because it's really just about learning that every day is worth celebrating. <laughs> it's all about beautiful descriptions and there's some really beautiful scenes in this book. One where she's reading a book on the stairs where there's a stained glass window and the sun is coming in just so and illuminates the pages and colors the pages for her and it's not an illustrated book so it made it really wonderful. Speaking of illustrations, this one is illustrated by Iveta Dualren. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but the original was illustrated by the great Garth Williams. You probably know Garth Williams. He did Cricket in Times Square and Stuart Little and Charlotte's Web and a slew of other children's books. But I must say I really enjoy her illustrations. I think even though they're unique and they're definitely her own, she pays tribute to the original Garth Williams version. In the original version, Garth Williams decorates the chapter headings with some sort of floral or botanical and she does the same. My library had a copy of the Garth Williams so I kind of did a comparison between the two illustrators and she still has a way of capturing that sort of quaint life that at the time. So for example, here's one of the illustrations which I just thought was charming. Also, by the way, um, all the paperbacks that I'm going to show you so far have that velvet touch, that same sort of soft rubbery feel to them, which I just love. So that's the Golden Name Day. And again, I'll link Celeste's YouTube video if you want to find out more about the Golden Name Day. So that is Purple House Press's Golden Name Day by Jenny Lindquist. Another book that I purchased from Purple House Press that I've already read is Keeper of the Bees by Jean Porter Stratton and it was originally published in 1925 and I just thought this was so beautiful. First of all it's that beautiful matte velvet touch and the, the cover art is gorgeous. It is, I could probably say with 100% certainty that this is the prettiest version out there available. I love the interior decorations too. The decorations are by Lee Thayer and the illustrations are by Gordon Grant. And 
The first couple of pages are highly decorated and so beautiful. And then after the first couple of decorations, you have the chapter heading illustration and every chapter heading is illustrated. They also have these illustrations by Gordon Grant. He was a huge illustrator for the Boy Scouts of America. So you might recognize that style. So here's another one. And I really enjoyed this book. If you are interested in the flora of California, San Verbena, the jacaranda trees, this is such a beautiful book. This is my first book by Jean Porter Stratton. And from what I understand, she was a huge nature writer. And the nature descriptions in this book are just wonderful. It's just such a feel-good book about resilience and about um, kindness towards other people. We follow Jamie McFarlane, who is from Scotland, and he has just come from fighting in World War I, and he's um, badly injured. He's been sent to California to recover, and he's been there for two years, and he overhears a discussion where they are talking about sending him to another hospital that is well known for patients getting infected with tuberculosis. And he says, no, I'm not going there. I'm going to die on my own terms. So he leaves and he takes off and he basically gets dressed and walks down the road. And we follow him as he travels through California a little bit. This part of the book is quite exciting. He, he eventually ends up on a bee farm of sorts, a house with um, a, a huge garden and some hives. And he arrives there timely because the bee master, the person in charge of the bees, has to go to hospital. And this person asks Jamie if he would please look after his bees for him. The house is full of books about beekeeping and we learn as we read about keeping of bees. One of the things that I learned that I just never really paid attention to or, re or realized before is that bees are very attracted to the color blue. And I actually looked it up online and it is true. Bees prefer blue and violet and purple because that's the spectrum of colors that they most easily see and recognize. It's funny, I went out into my garden now knowing this and I started paying attention to which flowers the bees are landing on and they were definitely landing on all my corn flowers. But anyway, I just really enjoyed this book. I, it was such a relaxing read. It does have a couple of elements that are of its time, but not so much that I think would really impede anyone's enjoyment of it. There's also an old classic film that's Keeper of the Bees by Purple House Press. And then I'll show you the other ones that I bought. I have not read any of the other ones, but I just wanted to show them to you. They're books that I want to get to. The Tangled Skein, is that how you say it? <laughs> it's by Alta Halverson Seymour, and it looks really interesting. First of all, it's just beautiful. It's about Solveig. She and her family live in Norway. World War II has ended, and her brother is thought to having been a Nazi spy, and the family's being treated with disdain because of this, and Solveig doesn't believe it, and I think it's, it seems to be about how she goes about dis disproving this accusation, I think. I'm not really sure, I haven't read it yet, so, but I'll let you know when I read it, but it does sound very interesting. And here's an illustration by Harold Minton, which I think is wonderful. And Purple House Press publishes several of Alta Halverson's Seymour's books. Um, she was an author who was living in Minnesota. I think she was born in Wisconsin, but she lived in Minnesota, but she traveled with her husband. Most of her books occur in other places in the world. And she also has that those Christmas Around the World series, which I'm interested to get into as well. Another book I picked up is 12 Months Make a Year by Elizabeth Coatsworth. If you are familiar with The Cat Who Went to Heaven, I believe this is one of her most famous works. Then she's the author of 12 Months Make a Year. This is a book about a family living in New England and it follows their lives throughout the year, beginning in January. It's illustrated by Marguerite Davis and I'll show you the July, since we're in July, I'll show you the illustrations for July. There's two of them. There's this one for July. And then the second one for July is very charming. The family by the seaside. Mm -hmm. Very excited to read this. Elizabeth Coatsworth, she and her husband settled in Maine 
and they had a farm called Chimney Farm, which is about an hour and a half away from me. And I would love to visit it, but I haven't been able to find out if it's open for visitors or if it's a private residence. So I'll be looking into that. So that'll be really cool if I can go visit her farm. And then the last one that I want to show you is one that I purchased definitely in mind for my son, the Shy Stegosaurus of Cricket Creek. This one has a different finish than the rest of them. This one has sort of the glossy finish. It's by Evelyn Sibley Lampman, and it's illustrated by Hubert Buell. And let me show you one of the illustrations, which I thought were remarkable. And it seems to be about some twin siblings who live with a single mother, I think, who's trying to keep a ranch up and running. And while out and about, they come across a stegosaurus who they end up calling George. And he just gets into all kinds of mischief. And that's all I know about it. But it looks really exciting to read with my son. And as I've told you guys before on this channel, my son's really into dinosaurs. So I think he'll enjoy this one. And so these are all my Purple House Press that I'm going to show you. I'm so excited about this publishing company. And I'll show you a few more titles that I picked up in another book haul video that I'll do closer to the autumn. I picked up a couple of contemporary middle grade titles, Da Vinci's Cat by Catherine Gilbert Murdoch. My son and I really enjoyed this book so much that I just decided to add it to our library. I chatted about it on my books that we read for our trip to Italy video that I did a few months back. It was such a fun read, but it was also an education, um, not so much on Leonardo da Vinci, but more so on Raphael and Michelangelo. I'm very excited to read uh, The Book of Boy now from this author because I enjoyed this one so much. The other book I purchased when we are on our way coming home from Monster Jam, which we had to go to New Jersey for, we stopped at a Barnes and Nobles and I saw this book, The Whisper Wicks, The Labyrinth of Lost and Found, and it looks really good. And I bought the Barnes and Nobles exclusive edition. It's by Jordan Lees and illustrated by Vivian Tu. She's an artist from New Zealand and her artwork is all over the place. You might recognize her version of Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim or The Incredible Journey. And she also did the cover art for the Arlo Finch series. It seems to be about 11-year-old Benjamiah Creek who receives a doll in the mail who transforms into a bird which leads him to this other land. It's a labyrinthine world with a minotaur. I actually wonder if it's a bit of a retelling of the Theseus myth. Here is one of her illustrations. Yeah, it's so beautiful and I love the sprayed edges on this Barnes & Nobles edition. Now I want to show you all the illustrated classics that I received. Uh, for my birthday, one of my sisters purchased Robert Ingpen's version of Aesop's Fables, um, which I am so excited to own because I have been admiring this book since it came out. And what I love about this version so much is there's so much history on Aesop himself who was um, reported to be disfigured. So whenever Robert Ingpen puts him into any of his illustrations, he is usually wearing a mask. Here are some of the illustrations. Here's Zeus and the honeybees, Hera and the peacock, the hare and the tortoise, a miraculous pig. Hmm, what does that sound like? <laughs> I do wonder if that's where E.B. White got the idea for Charlotte's Web. I wonder. Then of course I have to show you an actual honeybee. I just also wanted to read this other part that I came across. It's from The Birth of Aesop. Poor Aesop was also tongue-tied and could only get words out very slowly and with great difficulty. Yet this disabled slave became one of the greatest storytellers ever known and a blessing to mankind for hundreds of generations right up to the present day. All his fables have lessons, but the lesson of his whole life was that you do not have to be beautiful to be amazing. Another book I was so excited to get is illustrated by one of my favorite illustrators. I follow her on Instagram and I came across her work uh, when I found one of her books at a garage sale, I think it was, and it's about microbes. And it's a beautiful book all about germs and microbes and I'll pop it up on the screen. Following her on Instagram, I knew she was working on a version of Shakespeare's First Folio. So when I saw it come out, I just had to get it. Shakespeare's First Folio, all the plays, a children's edition, illustrated by Emily Sutton. And it is really one of the most beautiful books I have ever seen in my life. It is abridged by Dr. Anchino Chuhan, who does a, several informative videos on Shakespeare on YouTube. So I'll link 
um, that below if you're interested. But she's um, quite the authority on Shakespeare. And it's fashioned to be performed by 8 to 12 children ages 7 to 14 um, in under 20 minutes. Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust 400th Anniversary Edition. And what I also thought was amazing is that upon publication, the um, Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust distributed 6,000 copies to schools around the UK and 3,000 copies to libraries around the country at no cost. And so I thought that was just wonderful. Let me show you. So we've got under the dust jacket is the same as the dust jacket. And then we have the beautiful end papers. And the illustrations are just gorgeous. Let me read this part to you, this introduction. To the reader, to read or not to read this book. It's in your hands, so take a look. The plays by gentle Shakespeare here with pictures through each play appear. For you and friends to laugh, to cry, to sink in thought, to wonder why. For you will find on every page the lives of us in every age. And though the folios affect, our aims to give you plays to act. And that's by Michael Rosen. Every one of the plays have a beautiful illustration to introduce the play. Then on the back side of the illustration, you'll find an illustrated cast of characters. And, you, and all throughout the book are beautiful borders. And here's another one, Othello, the Moor of Venice. And I'll show you the back side of that one which I thought, and they're just all so pretty. Honestly, one of the most beautiful books that I have ever had. And there are also spot illustrations all throughout the book. This was very timely for me because one of my good friends was a stay-at-home dad, and he just started acting again. And his first play was in the book of Will. And I just thought it was amazing that all these works of Shakespeare were actually saved by the other actors and put together into a folio. What a beautiful story, or else we might have lost Shakespeare. Perhaps we may have only had a couple of his plays and that was it. And so thankfully they got together and put his plays into a folio. I also wanted to tell you, earlier this year I read The Merchant of Venice and I was having a very difficult time with it, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to cheat a little and read this version. And I will tell you that even though it is edited for kids, it's still not completely unchallenging. You still have to think about what is being said because Dr. Anchino Chuhan, when she edited it, um, did leave all the Shakespearean language in it. She just took out and didn't add to. So it is still Shakespearean language. So it does still take some some work to understand it. It's not completely handed to a child, but I kind of like that because it gives the opportunity to get a really good foundation. The next book I want to show you was not a birthday gift. I actually purchased it on Amazon Prime Day. It was half off and I had had my eye on it. Um, because I did a Little Mermaid Illustrator Explorer a couple of summers ago, or maybe it was last summer, I can't remember. <laughs> Benjamin Lacombe's version of The Little Mermaid. His illustrations appear on many, many classics, but they're all uh, published in foreign languages. And this one had actually been published in French and they have now published it in English and I was so happy about that. And I hope that they do more of his classics in English. And it's a spectacular version. Most importantly to note is his version of The Little Mermaid is illustrated in the likeness of Hans Christian Andersen himself, which I thought was really touching and neat and um, and there's also a lot of history about Hans Christian Andersen and his life and what inspired The Little Mermaid. I just wanted to quickly show you how beautiful it is. It's the end papers. They're all, it seems to be man of war jellyfish, a shark one that is really beautiful. Full page spread. Some of the illustrations in here are might be a little bit more for the mature reader. So if you're reading to a very young child, you might want to choose a different version than this one. Otherwise, I think it's just such a beautiful version and very happy to add this to my bookshelf. And I really do hope that they publish more of Benjamin Lacombe's 
illustrations. And I do hope I'm saying his last name correctly. <laughs> On my previous Jane Austen video, I explained how for my birthday from my husband and my son, I received a rather generous uh, gift card to the Folio Society and I was holding two of the books back for this video. I showed you the Jane Austen titles, um, Mansfield Park and Pride and Prejudice there. But the other two books that I purchased are Howl's Moving Castle, and I've had my eye on this forever. I have not read Howl's Moving Castle and neither have I seen the Studio Ghibli film. <laughs> It'll be completely new to me, but I have been wanting to read it and I thought, well, why not? I'll just get this one because I really love Marie Alice Harrell's illustrations. I have her version of A Never Ending Story, which I've showed you on this channel a couple of times before. And I really adore her artwork. And let me show you a couple. This one is also beautifully illustrated. The other book that I want to show you is a book that I've had my eye on for so long and I'm so happy to have purchased it. And it's a book that I read in my 20s, I think, and I just fell in love with it. And it is Dune by Frank Herbert, their version of Dune, which is just stunning. I mean, Paul Atreides, blue eyes there. And look at this, and look at this beautiful spread. I just love this book so much. If Actually, I think I read it when I was 18 or 19 and then I read it again in my 20s. So I'm definitely due for a reread and not just because the movies came out because I was already beginning to feel like I needed to read this again. One of the um, other parents at my son's school when I go to pick him up has recently read Dune and Dune Messiah and just raves about it. And I keep going, oh, I need to read that again because yes, it was such a wonderful book, but there's a slipcase. So yeah, I'm just so happy to finally have this one on my bookshelves because I have been so wanting to get it forever. <laughs> Some of those other Cranford collections that I picked up. I showed you the Pride and Prejudice in my last video. I also picked up Jane Eyre with a frontispiece illustration by Frederick Henry Townsend and a beautiful chapter heading decoration with a drop cap on the first chapter. It's such a pretty book. I love these Cranford collection books. And then I picked up Wuthering Heights with a frontispiece illustration by C.E. Brock, who I spoke about on my last video as well. And here is their chapter heading illustration and drop cap. And I was so excited to see it has a B. I really love this one. It's so beautiful. And this, by the way, is the one and only copy of Wuthering Heights that I own. So I'm so excited to now have a Wuthering Heights. The other one is Little Women. And this one is by Frank Merrill, who I studied when I did my Little Women Illustrator Explorer. And he was the illustrator who illustrated Little Women the first time that the two parts were put together. And there's the chapter heading illustration with a drop cap there. I just had to sneak into my son's bedroom to pick up the next book for you because I was reading it to him last night and I forgot to pull it out for this morning. Pollyanna, and it's the Alma Classics edition. I really love these editions. I think their cover artwork is so pretty and cute. I've already shown you on this channel a couple of their others that I've purchased one is Anna Green Gables and the other is the Jungle Books and this one is unique because it has both the first and second Jungle Book in it and interior illustration by Ian Beck and this one is by Susan Hillard by the way and all of the books tend to have chapter heading illustrations only but they're adorable here's one of them this one is illustrated by Kate Hindley there's a particularly cute edition of The Wind in the Willows that she il illustrated. It's an adapted version of The Wind in the Willows. We have started reading it. It was published in 1913 and it's reading so easily. The chapters are short and it's quite exciting and funny. We're about to begin chapter eight. I was a little worried because I wasn't sure if my son would enjoy it, but he's really enjoying it so far. The relationship between Miss Polly and Pollyanna is very interesting. By chapter eight, she's already beginning to change her aunt, Miss Polly, who is very strict and stiff and needs to do things by the book. And Pollyanna is kind of a breath of fresh air for her. So yeah, it's very interesting. And it's different from the relationship that Anna Green Gables has with Marilla. There's just so much emphasis put on how Pollyanna is just so happy and grateful to have an actual blood relative that she can call her family member. And so it's a little bit of a different dynamic because of that. 
But yeah, we're really enjoying it so far. And this is the last of my illustrated classics. Now I'll show you a couple of titles that don't have illustrations. Pat of Silverbush. This cover is illustrated by Jackie Oakley. I just love these versions by Sourcefire Books. I've shown you Blue Castle before. Another unillustrated book that I picked up is mostly thanks to seeing these guys on YouTube so much. I've started collecting them. It's the Dean Street Press editions. I saw this one all done by kindness and I asked for this for my birthday and received it. And it, I was attracted to this one because it has to do with someone who has a lot of artwork up in their attic that they're trying to sell. So it's something to do with that. So I'm, I don't know, has anyone read this one all done by kindness by Doris Langley Moore? I'd be interested to know. So now I have three copies of Dean Street Press editions <laughs> to add to my shelves. And finally, I want to show you a book, and that is The Dragonfly Pool by Eva Ibbotson. And I really love these Macmillan versions with cover artwork by Joe Wilson. You might know Joe Wilson's artwork if you know the Folio Society's version of 2001 The Space Odyssey. There's also The Star of Kazan, I think, which is the one I want to get next. But yeah, I just really love these. I think they're really pretty. Very nice copies of Eva Ibbotson's works. Well, that is it. I hope you have enjoyed all these books. Let me know in the comments which books appeal to you or if you have any of these books. If you are interested in winning a copy of China Court, do head over to my Instagram and Facebook accounts. And once again, thank you Mandalay Press for the gift giveaway. I really appreciate it. Again, direct links are in the description box below. I'll be back again soon with another video. Until then, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, I hope you enjoy your summer. And if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, that you're having a cozy winter. And I will see you soon. Bye.